Hello everyone and welcome to today's episode of the Osasu Show. Our focus today is on the 2018 Appropriation Bill. Today we speak with a renowned economist to find out what his predictions are and if this Appropriation Bill is feasible to begin with. We're also going to assess the projections and implementation of the 2017 budget. Don't go anywhere and we'll be right back on the Osasu Show. 2018 budget, the budget was passed with misreaction in the sense that 2017 budget we are in now, currently in, we are yet to feel any meaningful impact of the budget. There is so much pain and hunger in the land. The budget, when it was passed in 2017, people were clapping and rejoicing that yes, there will be succor and relief to the masses. But unfortunately, 2007 is about ending and there is no meaningful impact felt in the budget. There is so much hunger, so much pain, so much worries in the land. So the budget 2018 is of no use to us because we have not seen the end of the present current budget. So how are we sure the 2018 will be okay? It is business as usual to us. Welcome back to today's episode of the Osasu Show. With me right now is Mr. Jide Akintunde, who is the Managing Editor of Financial Nigeria magazine. Thank you so much for joining me on today's program. Thank you very much for inviting me on your program. So far, what do you make of the appropriation bill? My assessment is that the 2018 budget, let's put it in that way, um, it's worse than nonsense in this of Nigeria. Let's break it down. So what you're saying now is that the budget is worse than nonsense. In what sense? We have projections of uh, the benchmark crude oil price is about $45 per barrel. The oil production estimate is about 2.3 million barrels per day. The exchange rate is about 305 per naira per dollar. So what are you saying that these estimations are off? or what is your issue with the budget, with the appropriation bill in general? Okay, now first, I take issues with the fact that this budget is exactly what it is, given the fact that the government itself says that it wants to revert to the January-December cycle mm -hmm. of budget making in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Now, so if you then look at the statement by uh, the finance minister that the 2017 budget will be rolled over into 2018, then I will tell you that the total budget that will be implemented in 2018 is not, uh, not 8.6 trillion, mm -hmm. but it is somewhere around 10 trillion. 50% of the capital vote for 2017 will be carried over into 2018. So when you add that to the 2018 budget, you'll find out that we're talking at about 10 trillion. Now, my core worries, and that's why I decided to use the extreme uh, language that I use in describing the budget. There are consequences for this. Now, we continue to borrow money to fund these budgets that are grossly unrealistic. So what you find is that whereas these budgets um, in time, just um, time passes and then the budget is not implemented, but you have the record. 
of the debt that you have, you, you owe creditors. So we are borrowing money to fund budgets that are not implemented. Year in, year out, we continue like this and we see a rapid build up of public debt in Nigeria. In two years, the public debt increased by 6.3 trillion. Now, let me highlight one point that um, I think we, we normally don't uh, look at very well. Now, in 2016, this, the budget was passed. It was hugely expansionary. And part of the rationalization for this budget was that it was going to inspire 4.3% there about GDP growth. That budget was passed in May. But at the time the government was signing the budget, the economy was already in recession. And that is, they, uh, they were signing a budget that says the economy will grow by over 4%, whereas at the time they were signing it, the, the economy was already in recession. There is absent-mindedness in, in budgeting in Nigeria. It's a glorified exercise that, honestly, if you just sit down and follow the trend, it doesn't make sense. How about the 2017 budget? It anticipates a growth of about 2.9%. Three months into the implementation of that budget, again, don't forget, this budget was signed into law in June. By September, the growth projection of the same document has been reversed, revised downward. So it tells us that, you know, the key issue with the budgets, it's not implementation. Nigeria says it is implementation, it is implementation. I don't think it is implementation. It is actually the fact that there is a high degree of absent-mindedness that goes into uh, uh, the budget making, such that it is dead on arrival in mm. terms of meeting its objective. But budgets are typically estimates, so can you really put the onus of the failure of this budget on solely the government? Because the fact is that they can't necessarily have spot-on predictions when they're drafting these budgets, can they? They should. They should. The budget is an estimate, but it must be near exact estimates. It cannot just be some wide figures just being abandoned about. Not only that, suppose the, um, uh, the benchmark price of oil is adjusted minimum, say $50 per barrel. That will bring down the deficit significantly. And if the deficit comes down, it will reduce the amount of money that government would have to borrow to fund the budget. Mm -hmm. And then that then will slow down the rapid buildup of public debt in Nigeria. But when you don't do this, you have the consequence. Now, Nigeria is now sitting on a time bomb, a public debt time bomb. First, an aspect of it has detonated, in my own understanding. So, two years ago, government started an aggressive borrowing in the domestic debt market. Government single-handedly overheated the domestic debt market. And now, it is apparent to the government that it could no longer borrow in the domestic market because it has driven um, yields on one year treasury bill to over 20%. So government's fiscal operation has actually now presented a dire situation in which government can no longer borrow in a domestic market. So now they tell us that they want to shift focus. They want to rebalance the domestic and foreign debt portfolio in, in favor of the latter. Mm -hmm. But I say this, in one, two, three years down the line, if they follow through with this foreign debt plan, we will also hit the same situation that we have hit with the domestic uh, debt market, whereby government cannot borrow. And so, here is the key risk. Suppose in three years' time, there is a shock in oil price and we face the prospects that we faced in 
2015, when the price of oil crashed to near 30 percent, at 30 dollars per barrel. What are we going to do? When we can borrow locally when we, when and we, we can borrow, borrow in the international Absol market. Absolutely. On that note, let's take a short break. When we return, more with Mr. G.D. Akintune. Don't go anywhere. There is a reason Africa is called the new frontier. What was once potential is now an opportunity ready to be seized. Once revered for our resources, today's wealth lies in our people. People who build the cities that shape the future. People who know an idea in one place means business in another. A generation for whom technology means there are no borders, no boundaries. We are the new lions in a brave new world. Kings of the urban jungle. And there's a bank that puts the world in our pocket and the future in our hands. UBA, Africa's global bank. You and I know what has happened. Budget was passed June. Has anything changed? Yes, Nigeria is out of recession, but that is just theoretical. In, 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 in practical, nothing has changed. Go out to the street and ask the common man there if anything has changed. Things are still difficult. Of course, budget say, government said they have, they have spent a lot, especially in capital projects. Yes, I accept. But it has not really translated into surplus to the common Nigerian. Welcome back to the Osasu Show. Still with me is Mr. Jide Akintunde, who is the managing editor of Financial Magazine. Thank you so much for sitting tight. Before we went on break, we are discussing the 2018 appropriation bill, and we talked about some of the loopholes we've found. So you were talking about the consequences of uh, our, both our local and our foreign borrowing. Can you expantiate on that, please? Yes. So um, the worry is that currently, government's fiscal operation in the last two years has first of all monopolized the domestic debt market. The private sector was crowded out. Now government has realized this as a well, I would say government has now admitted this as a problem, but it is, it is a clever uh, admittance. What government has done basically is to shift the argument that since it, it finds that it can no longer borrow at over 20% um, um, uh, interest rates, it now wants to shift um, the portfolio to foreign borrowing, whereby it is anticipated that government will borrow at a lower rate, you know, and that will help now um, will free the domestic market for the private the sector, sector to borrow. Mm -hmm. Now, it's not a credible argument because you see, you will look at it, you will say, okay, so government started on this aggressive domestic borrowing just two years ago. So it will mean that that policy was so short-sighted that it did not anticipate that two years on, it will be unsustainable. Hmm. So is your you suggestion know? to the government that they should finish up the cycle of, I believe the 2017 budget was passed in June. Yeah. So from June all the way to April, is that what you're saying, what that think, it should run its course? Well, what I think, mm -hmm. what I think is this. Government should repeal the, um, the, 2018, the 2017 budget you know, the, the part that would not be implemented beyond December mm -hmm. should be repealed. Yes. You know, so that will give some credibility mm -hmm. to this 8.6 trillion that government wants to spend. But they can only apply to abrogate the remainder of the 2017 budget when the 2018 budget is passed. Because if they do that, for instance, and the, and the National Assembly decides not to pass it by January, which is actually more realistic because if you present a budget in November, it's very difficult for over 400 and something lawmakers to agree on, you know, that exact budget in just 30 or 60 days. So if 
the executive arm of government decides to repeal the remainder of the 2017 budget and the 2018 budget is not passed in time, then you're left with a government with no budget. Well, let me, let me be very blunt with this, okay? Between, I think, July, when the first release of uh, the capital vote for 2017 budget was made, and November, we've, we've had a hiatus. So what has happened in this period? Look, the truth is that we need to bring honesty to the budgeting process. I will tell you that some of the proposals that I have written about with regard to how to reform the budgetary process will make it very possible for the budget to be passed in 10 days. Wow. Absolutely. You know, if you automate the budgetary process, I think that that automation process will eliminate a lot of the things that Nigeria shouts about every uh, year in, year out. The duplication and replication of same budget items every year. If there's an automation, the computer will sort out and flag these repetitions. And so you can just deal with that, you know, and so it, it does not form part of what is now being considered over a lengthy period of time. But let me also say this, even under the current uh, situation, what delays the budget, the passing of the budget, it's not really that it's such a very cumbersome um, uh, work, you know, to be done. It is political. Mm -hmm. It is politics. Exactly. That's yes. what I was going to mention. How would you deal with the lawmakers who claim they need to insert their constituency projects into the budget because they have to consult with their constituents before coming back, looking at the budget and fixing items that they have heard from their constituents needs to be fixed in their local governments and etc. Right. The, the, uh, the constituency projects and then the overall uh, budget of the National Assembly is usually exaggerated as the problem with, the, with budget making in Nigeria. I say this because all of that put together is less than 3%, it's just about 3% of the budget. In the 2018 budget, it probably will be about 2%. Okay, so you really cannot have a situation whereby 2% of something defines that, person, the, uh, that particular thing. What's the solution? We have to make the budget more credible. Like I, I will say, this eight trillion budget, what's the whole point of budgeting 2.4 trillion when you will not implement uh, more than half of that? Mm -hmm. Cut it down. And this, this is very, very, very critical. So this 2.4 trillion that is budgeted uh, mm -hmm. as capital expenditure and that amounts to 30% uh, in 2018, when you get to December 2018 mm -hmm. and you check, you will find out that... Only about 15%, isn't it? And out of that 15%, are you saying that only about 30% of that 15% is actually implemented at the end of the day? Yes, it would then mean that at the end of the day, these budgets, the percentage of capital expenditure really is not 30%. It's around 15 20%. If that is the case, mm -hmm. A strong argument will have arisen against this type of budgeting because mm -hmm. how do you, a developing country, why would you have your budget, 80% um, um, of it, accounted for by recurrent expenditure? That is not de developmental, mm -hmm. you know? But that argument is shielded by just simply presenting an outsized capital uh, uh, vote mm. that is never implemented. So it seems to me that we're borrowing now to, to fund our recurrent expenses. That's what it means. Which is, doesn't make sense. That's why I say it is worse than nonsense. Because it has consequence. When you borrow, you will have to pay back. So it is not just simply acting and then that is the end of it, mm. you know? So long after uh, 2019, long after this administration, you know, 
we will have to be to deal with the consequences of the fiscal policies of the last two years. Some Nigerians have said restructuring is a solution to uh, these issues that we're discussing today. Um, our inability to pay salaries, uh, boring to pay salaries, boring to fund um, capital uh, projects which we never actually end up completing or don't start in the beginning. What do you say to this? Um, I, I don't believe in the current talk about restructuring the country. And, and, and let me tell you why I don't believe it. I don't believe it is doable. I hate and I don't accept solutions that just hang in the air, something that cannot be actualized. I don't like it, you know, because in my own opinion, if we are really going to have this country restructured constitutionally, it really should be a campaign agenda of the government. Restructuring, it's, 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 it's a huge project. It's a huge, huge project. But I consider that within the framework of the discussion we are having, which one is easier? Definitely it is easier to do a honest budget than to restructure the country. Hmm. You know, so we should not bring restructuring into these dialogues as it is right now. Let us look at the budget, see how um, we can align it with reality. And I do think that the pressure point now should be on National Assembly. Nigerians should forget about constituency projects. They should forget about the allocation to the National Assembly. It is less than 3% of the budget. Let us get the National Assembly to pull down the excessive um, allocations on both capital and recurrent expenditure sides, you know. So bring the, 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 the uh, budget into some alignment with reality and then let us ensure that we implement it. What we have right now provides an excuse for lack of implementation, but that's what we will have in 2018. Like I said, in effect, what we will be dealing with in 2018 is not 8.6 trillion, but it will be around 10 trillion uh, naira. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have. Mr. G.D. Akintunde, thank you so much for joining us on this program. Thank you for having me. For extended clips of this interview, you can visit our website, tostvnetwork.com. You can also find their news on sustainable development and current affairs across Africa. On tostvnetwork.com, there's also a section for the People's Candidate. The People's Candidate avails you the opportunity to nominate who you want to be president in 2019. We've reached a time in our democracy right now where we need to return power back to the hands of the masses, the general populace, rather than a select few party leaders. So to participate in this process, visit tostvnetwork.com and click on The People's Candidate. I'll see you same time, same place next week. And until then, don't forget to follow us on social media at The Osasu Show, at TOS TV Network, at Osasu Igbenadion on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Take very good care of yourself. God bless you. If you ask me who I want to be my, uh, my president in the next election, I will have no other place in mind than good luck. Why? Because he has impacted in Nollywood, you know, youth empowerment. I know what he did in, in his era, uh, trying to empower um, Nollywood. So, he is my number one choice, as a matter of fact. Thank you, Thank you very much. God bless you. If it is possible for Mr. Goodluck Jonathan to contest back, I will be interested in voting him back. Because through his tenure, the country was a little bit calm, more than how it was now. So if I'm to say, that would be my choice during this election. I want Buhari to continue in 2019 because we have tried for our side, most especially we that come from Northeast. We have suffered under Boko Haram's insurgence. During the last uh, regime of uh, 2015, but now we have seen the change. Well, um, honestly, if I'm to have a choice of a president, I will go for Senator David Mack. Personally, I believe that leadership is not just about a party or uh, it's not just about the party it's about the individual concern. David Mark is someone that has that quality of a good leader 
And I believe that with him, our Nigeria, those dreams we, we used to have as a country with David Mark, we can achieve them. My candidate for 2019, if I will be permitted, I will honorably carry my vote to give Atiku Abubakar. Because why? I have reason to, 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 fo to focus my attention to someone like Atiku Abubakar, believing that the entire Nigeria know that he's a man that carried masses along with all things, all he's doing. And he has he has done tremendously to this country because most of his investment has been in this country and we are benefiting. He has education, anti-investing anti in Yola. We have Nigeria, we even have other support from other countries. I don't have anyone because if I said Buhari or if I said Gulag, for me, I don't want anyone. We are waiting for God to choose for us.